So here's how to install the full suite. All you have to do is have Reaper open, download the file, then go to Options, Preferences, go to the top option, which is General, and then do Import Configuration. All you have to do is go search for wherever that file is. It doesn't have to be in any particular folder. Just search for the file, the full suite, double click, and then it'll ask you to import. You say OK, and there you go. It's importing all of the settings. And you can actually choose to import you know, just the project or just the cursor. It, you can decide whatever you would like, but the full suite is all of it. It's automatically all clicked. You just press import. And there you go. It's all imported. All the files are imported. So there's three more steps you have to do. You have to actually import the actions. So go into actions, import, and then this should pop up automatically. It should be under key maps. If this is anything different than key maps, you can find the folder that we're looking for in options, show Reaper resource path in Explorer. And then you can go to key maps. But this should automatically, unless you've been doing other things differently, this should automatically just go to the folder that you're looking at here. I've separated macros and scripts in case you needed it, but really you just need to double click on the full suite. It imports all the custom macros and scripts for you. You're done there. Um, then you have to, if you want the buttons that I showed, you have to go into these, this side for the main toolbar. You right click, go to customize tool set, and then you just need to import that tool set. So you import, it should come up automatically. If not, it's in the options. Um, show resource path, but it should be menu sets. Double click on that. Now your menus are fine. And then last but not least, you have to go into the mouse modifiers. So go into options, preferences, go to mouse modifiers, and then import, load modifiers for all contexts. And then again, this should just pop up for you. It should be as easy as double clicking. If not, it's in mouse maps and you can go into the show, uh, ex show and explorer double click, you're good, apply, and now you're ready to go. You have everything set up, all of the tools, you even have the template, which is already should be there, which you can open up and then you start working. Now, if this is your first time using Reaper, I do wanna go through a few quick tips to get you up and running in the way you know with Pro Tools. First of all, now that you have the template open, I would do a save as so that you can have a session with a folder sort of like you're used to with Pro Tools. All you have to do is save as and make sure that these two buttons down here, make sure those two are selected and then name your file, whatever, and then save. So that's all you have to really know for saving a template. Then, there are a few other options. If you go into options, make sure that you have automatic scroll during playback, either selected or not selected, depending on what you like. I have it unselected because I don't like the scroll moving when it goes off the screen. That's something that's very annoying. Then let's go into options and set a few preferences here. Before we get into all the features, I'm gonna go fast on these. And if you have trouble trying to find them, you can always go to this little find box and type in what I'm talking about. So if it's fade in, you press enter, it goes to the folder that has any fade in on it. If you press enter again, it'll find other options of fade in throughout all of the preferences. Super handy, cool thing that Reaper has in it. Let's look at render paths. So default render path. Okay, so in paths, we want to set up folders for where our files go for exporting or what Reaper is render or what Pro Tools calls bounced files. So if you just write in a random name, I have it as render, you could have it as bounced files or export, then it'll go to that file automatically. So as an example, it'll look like this. It'll have your project name. It'll have then your render folder, which will have all your rendered files. And this could be bounced or whatever you would like. That's what this option means. Also, when recording, you can do the same thing. I have it as recording to put it all into a recording folder. 
Then I also like to have save all peak cache files in a certain folder. So it's very similar to SoundForge where it makes these peak files. And if you know from SoundForge, it'll put it every time you change a file, it puts it everywhere. It puts it on by every file. So I like to set this to a path that has all the peak files put into one place so it's far away and I never see it. Next, we'll look at backups. So these are the settings I use for backups. You want to have this just like as Pro Tools saves backups every whatever minutes you decide. Reaper does the same thing. The settings I have for this are that I keep multiple versions because I want multiple backups in case there's a crash. I do it every three minutes and then I save it into a backups folder. Meaning, if you look here again, there's a backup folder and it has all of my backup files in there. This was just created, so there's not too many backup files. Next is default fade in. Very cool feature with Reaper. You can actually tell it the default fade to put on. So whenever you're using the shortcuts D and G, it'll default to this fade. Love this. And you can choose fade curves appropriately. Also, you can default the crossfade. And you can default the automatic crossfade in and out. Really cool features. A feature that I don't like that Reaper does is it automatically mutes any track if you go above a certain volume. I want to always hear the sound, so I click this off. Another thing that Reaper sets is a small volume range. I like to have the biggest volume range possible. So the volume range means that whenever I'm raising or lowering the volume here, I want this range to be huge. So I have it at plus 24. It's very limiting when it's lower than that. So I just highly suggest you look at the setting and decide what you want. You can also set the envelope range for pitch. I have it to 20 semitones. It's defaulted to four, which I don't think is enough. Just another feature to look at to see what you would like. Also within these envelope display editing, I like to show the envelopes in the same track and not a new track. In Reaper, you can either have it so that the volume, just like Pro Tools, comes up on the same track, or it could come up on a separate track if you would like. Also, another thing that I would have unchecked is automatically show affected envelopes when moving media items across tracks. I don't like automatically an envelope popping up when I'm moving items, especially when you're importing OMFs. It gets really annoying. So I would highly suggest unclicking this so that volume automation only pops up when you click a button. And last but not least is disable high resolution peaks for video items. This is clicked by default. I would highly suggest you unclick it. I've noticed when that is clicked that when you zoom in very far in and there's a video, it chugs. Reaper just chugs. It doesn't work very well. When this is disabled, works great. So I just highly suggest if you work with video to unselect this. So those are just a few tips to get you up and running, very similar to Pro Tools, fast. <laughs>